Now along comes Parmenides. And Parmenides, like Heraclitus, thought that his predecessor, his predecessor being Heraclitus, made a significant mistake. Heraclitus pinned everything, that is, he bet on change being the fundamental, the fundamental makeup of the world. Now Parmenides ends up thinking that change is impossible and argues that Heraclitus is wrong, change is impossible. There's only one thing, it's not the stuff that we see. Everything that we observe is wrong. So what Parmenides is saying is both Heraclitus and the Milesians got the picture wrong. What is it that they got wrong about the picture? That you could base your knowledge on what you see, what you hear, what you think. Sorry, not what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, not what you think. He thinks that's where they made the mistake, but keep in mind, we're rational beings. We can reason our way to that, to, to the right conclusion. What can we reason to? We can reason to the truth, and the truth is that there's only one thing, and he gives an argument to prove that change is impossible, that there can only be one thing. Remember, we went through those arguments, and Zeno supports him. Well, that's not a happy picture of truth. It doesn't fit in with what we think about things, so the ancient world is kind of in a bad position intellectually. So along come the sophists. And remember, we said, you know, knowledge entails truth, right? True opinion plus an account. True belief plus a justification. Now, the sophists want to bring knowledge back. And how are they going to do it? Well, here's where Parmenides went wrong. He's talking about absolute truth. And the same thing with Heraclitus. They're worried about absolute truth, things being objectively true, true forever, eternally true. There is no such objective truth according to the sophists. Man is the measure of all things. What man thinks is true. What, a, what an individual man thinks is true for him, it is a form of relativism. So the answer is, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? How can you gain knowledge you can gain knowledge by learning rhetoric, by influencing people. Sometimes you're being able to persuade people of the truth of your position and change what they think so their measure of all things is the same as what your measure of things. And that's why they were the guys running around the ancient world taking huge fees. You know, these were the hedge fund guys back in Socrates' days uh, in ancient Greek. These were the evil guys who were getting the big fees for teaching the students. They were teaching them rhetoric to convince somebody to come over to your position and see the world as you do and share in your truth, which would give you power, which is why the rich were willing to pay to have their children educated by the sophists. Well, there's no objective truth, so things like murder is wrong not objectively true rape isn't wrong it's just because people think it is that makes it wrong if everybody thought rape was okay it would be perfectly okay it's not a position that we are happy with today so along comes Socrates and Socrates just doesn't see that that is the case that there is an objective truth that there are objective ethical values there's virtue, there's right and wrong. In fact, we should be pursuing knowledge because that is the ultimate virtue. So that's the position he takes, but the question is, how do we restore true objective truth in this world? And keep in mind, when we look, when we mention the trial of Socrates, basically when you look at it, his trial was objective truth on trial versus the relative truth of the sophists. 
So Socrates is trying to defend the objective truth, the thing that seems right, that we're naturally inclined to, but how is it that you go about defending it?